Okay. There it does go. some fantastic lighting. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. There we go. Yeah. yeah so just engine. like we saw in the concept, it's dark. Uh, it's really hard to see what's out there. And we do that on purpose to contribute to the fear of the unknown, right? You don't know what's back there. We're, we're doing that on purpose. But then just there's just a little bit of uh, uh, life in there just so that it's not completely dead scene. Um, and then as we look above us, we see the, the massive engine. Uh, and it's, again, it makes us feel small and insignificant, right? It's, it's looming. So I mean, as we're looking around, we see all those effects that you saw earlier in gyms. Now you see it here, steam coming out of the pipes. There's some secondary animation with the moving pistons. It gives life, you know, it communicates that this is an industrial thematic. And then we're always leading the player with a little bit of horror storytelling, a little bit of narrative. We have the various tools and crates. Um, I love the masks on sign up there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Quite thematic. Safety first. Exactly. This space is a game about safety. <laughs> okay, so in this state, uh, now, now we're in a state where it's starting to you know, power the uh, room. So the engine is slowly starting to rotate a little bit of uh, life to it. Lights, you can see the blood. You'll have to speak up. We've booted up an engine. <laughs> yeah, it's uh <laughs> Let's follow the blood trail then. Let's do that. <laughs> no. It's always a good idea. So here we go. This is the iconic um, poster that, that we saw earlier. You can and see the different treatments on the blood, like the one that is still wet, blood that's got dried up on the side. Yeah. More is more. More types more, of blood. More. more blood states. More blood conditions. Yeah. And then we finally get here, uh, and we're going to activate the engines. Turn it on. Let's turn it. And we look up above us, and then we can see this glorious, you know, VFX. The engine's fully operational. It's open. It's spinning at full speed. It's like a, it's like a beating heart. Uh, the room has come to life, and we have completed the transformation. And then as we look to the right, we witnessed the scene of a horrific bloodbath, and uh, yeah, some bad stuff happened there. Again, just that, just that great, great teamwork between the environment artist and the story artist. Like, yes. I mean, you can really, you, you, you can guess what happened there. Mm -hmm. And then we're back into darkness as we make our way down, and then we take one last look at the engine and then the smoke-filled room. There's those sparks. Yeah. And that's it for today.
we injected the horror pillar into this room with a bloody narrative scene on the bed and floor. We want to insinuate that something horrible happened here and give that sense of danger looming around every corner. Thank you for joining us on this behind the scene look at the environment art process. The first thing I'd like to show you is how some of our VFX can react to changing environmental conditions. So here we have a debug scene. And as you can see, it's pretty much empty with some sparks and drips. These are pretty typical VFX that we'll see in a number of locations in the Ishimura to show damaged areas. What I'd like to show you is how these effects can react to changing environmental conditions, and in this case, what happens when gravity is disabled. I'm going to disable the gravity here, and right now we can see that these VFX are behaving differently, and they're no longer falling to the floor. Now there's a lot more happening than just the gravity. I can make a number of artistic choices as to how the VFX behave. For example, with the drips, I wanted to extend their lifetime so they spread out across the room rather than disappear quickly. For the sparks, I reduced their turbulent motion because when they had a lot of turbulence, it felt like they were still in normal conditions. There's a number of things that we can modify so that when the player interacts with these effects, they'll feel believable and well integrated. These little details can really add up to help tell the story and make the Ishimura feel like it's alive. The final thing I wanted to show is our interactive atmospherics. So here I am in another test map. I have a few debug lights floating around so we can see what's happening here. I'll just back up and start one of our steam effects. So what do we have here? It's a volume-based 3D simulation. It exists inside a container, and density and velocity values are pushed around to create what we see here. Something that's cool about this simulation is that it lives in the physics world, so if the player walks through it, it will interact. Also, if I pick up an object, like this battery, it will also behave quite naturally. This will work if I spawn an enemy. I disabled its AI, so it won't attack me. As you can see, the steam will collide and interact with him too. This effect also works quite well with our lighting and renders with the rest of the fog we have throughout our game. This can be used in a number of cases. We can create a steam or smoke effect like this, or we can cover the floor with a thin layer of interactive fog. In some cases, we can even fill an entire room with a cool simulation like this to give us some interesting and terrifying gameplay situations. Let's talk a little bit about, you know, where you're kind of seeing this move. We see Isaac kind of in the space right now, floating around the space, uh, probably gonna show off some of his thrusters and, and, and stuff in a minute. Uh, I'd love to hear more about, you know, kind of where you're thinking about in terms of improvements in this layer too. So for us, really going back to the original Dead Space, it was something that uh, we felt, so again, super early build, <laughs> that we felt we could, uh, we could actually improve in terms of, uh, of experience and immersion. It's the zero G and how you would move around uh, in zero G. And that's something that was really good and improving the experience in Dead Space 2 and 3 that we felt was really missing in, uh, in the original Dead Space. And so that's why we, we took that mechanic of, uh, of flying around when you're in zero G and with much more 360 degree freedom and now you can play Dead Space and really feel you in space during, uh, during those moments. And so also that's a mechanic that uh, we're starting to, uh, to improve a bit on. Like for example, now you can interact as, uh, as you fly around, you can go into uh, tighter corridors, those kind of things. But also it allows us to revisit some of the old content and create new ways to navigate new path like here in the original you would have gone back through that door through uh, where you came from and here it allows us to create new environments with eventually new challenges to surprise also the people that know the game and uh, will be like oh wait what's that what's 